Hello. Welcome to the Stone Age. That's a really funny thing to say, isn't it? Welcome to the Stone Age. But that's your topic at the moment, the Stone Age, and it's really exciting and it's really big. The Stone Age went on for three million years. That's basically nearly all of the time people have been here. Um, three million years. Can't even imagine how big that is. That was me trying to imagine three million years. You have a go. Try and imagine three million years. Can you imagine three million ants? I can picture about a hundred ants. Now imagine about a thousand ants all crawling on the floor. I can just about picture that. A thousand ants. Now, can you picture a thousand a thousand thousand ants. No, it's gone. That's how hard it is to imagine three million years. It just is impossible. It's enormous. We're going to do some great Stone Age things. But first of all, let's imagine right here where you're watching this. It could be a school hall. You might be at home. But wherever you are in this country, imagine this. It didn't look like it looks now. Have a look out the window. I can see some cars. There certainly weren't any cars. I could see some buildings. Weren't any buildings. I can see some fences, some pavements, no, some telegraph poles, no, they weren't here. This is what was here. Around you now, there would have been a lot of trees, a great big forest. It probably looked a little bit like this or a bit more maybe a bit like this or even more a bit more like this or even a bit more like this we have a forest there's a thick forest all over the country but it's not just an empty forest oh no here in the stone age Right where you are watching this film now, in this country, there would have been a forest full of creatures. How about this one? There may have been, wandering around, a giant deer. Enormous creatures. The deer itself is big. Imagine the antlers on top. Obviously, you just have to imagine the antlers because we can't see one now. What? You laughing? At my forest? My Stone Age forest. Anyway, back to the forest. Also, in this forest, in this country, in the Stone Age, a huge forest full of possibly giant deer. Also wandering with the giant deer could have been a hyena. Now, a hyena, you never see a hyena in this country now. You probably didn't even know that there was, what? Hmm. A hyena in this country. There is evidence of hyenas. The bones have been found. That tells the archaeologists that in the Stone Age we had forests full of giant deer and hyenas. But not just those two creatures. Incredible as it may seem, there were also animals that lived in caves. And I don't mean cavemen, oh no, or cave ladies. I mean, this is amazing, I mean Cave lions, lions in this country. I know, amazing, but how scary would that be to come across a cave? What's, there's a noise. Hmm. Cave lions in the forest in this country, in the Stone Age, amazing. But it's not just cave lions, it's not just hyenas, and it's not just giant deer. Oh no, there would have been other creatures, incredible creatures. For example, do we have bears in this country now? No, but in the Stone Age, there would have been bears in the forest, right where you are watching. Hmm. Right now, where you are watching this, Could have been 
where you're sitting right now, there could have been a bear in the Stone Age. That's incredible, isn't it? But it's not just bears in the forest. It's not just giant deer. It's not just hyenas. It's not just cave lions. There would have been an incredible creature thundering through the forest sometimes. You may have seen, and this would be unlucky, you would have been unlucky to come across a rhinoceros. Terrifying, strong, and very noisy. I can hear something. Very, very terrifying to come across. I, I can hear something. Mm. In the Stone Age forest, rhinoceroses. There would have been giant deer. There would have been cave lions. There would have been hyenas. There would have even been all those creatures at the same time, possibly. Wow. There would have been all those creatures in this country. Well, well, that's the Stone Age at the beginning. Anyway, we have a setting. The Stone Age in this country, very different to how it is now. But we're not just going to spend all the time in this forest. We're going to be talking about all sorts of exciting things, doing all sorts of exciting things. I can hear another creature coming along into the forest. Hello, Tim. Hello, Cos. How are you? Here's a creature in the doing? Stone Age. Well, we're talking to the children about the Stone Age. Hello, children. There they are. Can you see them? I'm Cos. And I'm Tim. And today is a Stone Age, maybe Stone Age day, Stone Age hour. It's Stone Age time. So you were talking about the forest? Yeah, it was great. We had Did you some... see anything? We were, obviously not, because we're not in the Stone Age. We had to imagine, we imagined, right? How about this? We imagined that there were giant deer. Giant deer. Uh, we imagined hyenas. Oh, yes. Hyenas. Laughing hyenas. <laughs> we imagined, I don't know if they sound like that. We imagined cave lions. Oh, cave yes, lions. the cave lions. We yes. imagined bears. Oh, bears. And we imagined, uh, which was scary, we had to shut our eyes. We imagined rhinoceroses. <gasps> Or rhinoceri might be. And uh, you didn't see anything? No, oh. we were imagining. We didn't see any creatures. Okay. Now, uh, the next creature we are going to be talking about in a minute or two is a very different creature to those that we imagined but didn't see. Uh, it's cave people. Well, not cave oh. people, Stone Age people. Stone Age people. Because they didn't really live in caves much, a little bit, but not all the time. Shall we go and get ready? We're going to get ready. We'll see you in a minute. See you in a minute. Hello again, it's me, Tim. Now, we're still in the Stone Age and here is a real true story about a Stone Age person. A real Stone Age person. Now, once upon a time, right at the end of the Stone Age, imagine here, here are the mountains of Italy. There is our Stone Age person. He was walking around in the mountains of Italy around 5,000 years ago, right at the end of the Stone Age, and somebody, we don't know who, Somebody shot him with a bow and arrow. Now, I think that's my job, don't you? Um, bow and arrow. <laughs> so somebody, while he was climbing around in the mountains, shot him with a bow and arrow. Pinoing. And he died. He's dead. Now in the mountains of Italy, it snows a lot. And it snowed on top of him. Now, that's a bit tricky, you think. Indoors, snow, we can do snow. Here in the mountains of Italy, whew, it's a blizzard. There's snow everywhere. It's coming down from the sky and the mountains and it's pouring down the gullies and the glaciers and look. Oh, it's covered him over with a whole layer of snow. Now, this man in the Stone Age, he died, true story. He got covered in snow, true story. And the snow covered the snow and the snow covered the snow covered the snow pressed hard and it turned to ice and the man is now frozen just like your fish fingers in the freezer 
he stayed there for 5,000 years. He stayed there in the ice. Nobody knew about him. But the weather changes. And about 30 years ago, which isn't very long, it's probably when your mummies and daddies were born, the weather got a bit warmer and some of the ice began to melt. Watch this for a special effect. Melting ice. Look at that. And what happened was the ice melted so much that the man's arm started to show. There it is, you can see his arm sticking out of the ice. And then the man's other arm started to show. There it is, sticking out of the ice. And eventually somebody saw him. By then, nearly all of him were sticking out of the ice. Like that. Now, of course, at first, people were really worried there had been a murder on the mountains. Well, I kind of had been a murder on the mountains, but it was 5,000 years ago, so it's kind of a different sort of murder. And what they did, they sent for people to come and look at this man, and they realised he had been there for a very, very long time. And they carefully, carefully lifted him out of the ice and took him back to a laboratory where they could use all sorts of science. You're dead. He's dead. They could use all sorts of science to find out about Stone Age people. We'll see you in the laboratory. Hello, we're back. Uh, the laboratory, I'm afraid, was out of action. Double booked. So uh, we're here. We're going to... Uh, Cos, you don't mind helping? No, no, we're I don't mind helping. The laboratory is where the man from the ice was taken and the scientists looked at him very closely indeed and they discovered an awful lot about Stone Age people. Um, first of all, believe it or not, he had all his clothes on still after 5,000 years. Um, for example, he had a little jerkin made out of animal skin, a bit like uh, this. Good. Ha. There we are. He has a little jerkin over the top, but that's not enough to keep you warm in the icy, snowy mountains. He would have had, uh, well, he had a fur skin over the top, kind of like a little cloak around his shoulders, a little bit like this. Like this. Um, Still not enough, he actually had a cloak, a full cloak, made out of grass of all things, a grass cloak. And that looked a little bit like, uh, oh, Cos, are you still helping? You're still here helping? Excellent. A bit like this. Are you warming up now? Yes. Got nice. a lot of nice clothes on. Excellent. And then they started looking more carefully, more closely at Otzi, the man in the ice. And they found out by looking very carefully that he had a brown curly beard like this ha. yes he was starting to look more like cos or his cos looking more like him they looked even more closely and they found as well as a brown curly beard lots of a brown curly hair a bit like this ha. like that i bet he's nice and warm now Oh yes. Still ready to uh, help us, Cos? Oh yes. Yeah. Um, they had a really close look at his skin and they found out that actually he was covered in tattoos. 50 tattoos. Ah, uh, not any old tattoos though. These were straight lines, dots and crosses. I wonder what they meant. Have a chat about that later on maybe. But this is what they look like. A bit like this. <laughs> they also found that he had brown eyes and rotten teeth, a bit like this.
Also, he had a fantastic furry hat on to keep that snow out. Uh, he probably would have looked a bit like this. <laughs> and uh, amongst other things, some of his possessions, he had a dagger. Whoa! He had a dagger. Uh, dagger was a bit like this. There's his dagger. And uh, he had a bow and arrow. Mm -hmm. Is that your bow and arrow? Okay. He had a little pouch like this made of leather. Inside, we think, is his medicine. It was uh, various different types of plants. Uh, would you like your medicine? Okay. Uh, here we have uh, our Otzi. Thank you for helping, Cos. A round of applause for Otz, Cos Otz. Thank you. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Now, um, get yourself sorted out. I need your help. So now I'm going to show you how to make your very own leather pouch, like the one that Otzi, the Iceman, as they call him, as he would have been wearing um, over 5,300 years ago when he was walking through the Alps. Um, so here we have a piece of sheepskin. This is real sheepskin. Um, you could use something else. Stone Age people would have used a lot of animal skins to make things out of because they're quite tough and last for a long time. Um, we're also using a wooden needle. Uh, I, I've made this one. Um, Stone Age people probably would have made their needles out of animal bone. They could use wood as well. Animal bone is much stronger and will last longer. And here we've got some fake, so it's not real, um, some fake deer sinew. So sinew is kind of the stretchy, stretchy, it's almost like elastic and it connects all the muscles together and helps your muscles to move around. So this is, um, the Stone Age people would have used animal sinew because it's quite strong, tough and will last a long time. Uh, we're using pretend deer sinew. So, here we go, let's get started. I've got my piece of leather and step one, what we need to do is just fold it in half. Now this has got holes up both sides. If you can manage to match up the holes, then that's quite a good thing. Step two, I'm going to take one piece of the deer sinew and thread it through the top holes like this and just gently tie a knot like so. So we've just got it tied at the top. This is where the opening is going to be. That's the bottom and I've got a knot here. Now I'm going to thread my needle. Through it goes. Now it's time to start sewing. So, from the back, through, so if this is the first hole, this is going to be the second hole. So we've gone from the back, push the needle through, pull it out, like that. And then onto the third hole, from the back, push it through, Pull that sinew through gently there. And then on the fourth hole from the back and then pull it through. On the fifth hole from the back and we're going right down to the end. And then what we'll do when we get to the end, we're going to turn around and come back up the other way. So from the back on that one there. And then on the last hole, number six, seven, let's have a go. Okay. So now I'm going to sew it back up to the top. So once again, from the back, only this time, I'm moving back up to the top of the pouch. And what you end up with is a nice crisscross pattern. Can you see the crisscross pattern? starting up there. So I'll just go back up to the top. And there should be just enough sinew 
but when you get to the top we're going to tie a knot and then that side will be finished but we'll leave the leftover sinew there because we can use that to tie up our pouch in a moment so we've got to the top take it off the needle and then I'm going to tie a knot once, twice. So that's one side. Now what you're going to do is exactly the same thing on the other side. Start at the bottom, tie the knot, sew up one side, sew up the other side. So here we've got one which has already been done. As you can see, this little pouch is now looking like a proper pouch. It's got an opening at the top and it's been sewn up both sides. And we've got our two leftover bits of sinew here. So there's your pouch made. That's what it should look like, something like that. But of course, it's got nothing in it yet. So we need to put some special things in there. Now, scientists know because they found out when they looked at what Otzi was using and carrying when they looked at his body in the laboratory, um, they know that he was carrying some medicinal fungi. So this is a type of fungus that the Stone Age people would have known could make you better. So we do know, for example, that Otzi had really bad teeth. Mm. Even though we don't think Stone Age people had sweeties, he obviously didn't clean his teeth very well. So um, some medicinal fungi. Uh, what have I got here? Um, I found this outside. I'm going to put that in the pouch there. Um, now something else that um, is very, very useful. Some dried moss, which is very useful for if you want to start a fire. You get a piece of flint. You smash the bits of flint together um, and then you make a spark. But if you haven't got any dry grass or dry moss, you won't be able to make your fire. So let's put some moss in there. Um, ours isn't actually very dry, but there you go. We'll tuck it in there. It should dry over the next few days. And we'll put some bits of flint in there in a moment. And then you can tie up your pouch just by wrapping your bits of sinew around. And tie a knot. There you go. Ta-da! A little leather pouch, just like Oxy the Stone Man was carrying on him 5,300 years ago.